Hello, thanks. Good afternoon. Welcome to our faith class that we have on Saturday. And what we've been doing is going through the book of Hebrews, seeing what the different patriarchs did by faith. Today, what we want to look at in Hebrews 11th chapter, if you got a, any kind of reference Bible or some kind of Bible that has um, these scripts added in to tell you what the passage is talking about. It's talking about here, the, I have a New King James Bible and it says, um, the heavenly hope. That's what we want to look at today is the heavenly hope. Because when you talk to people, they have all different views of who's going to go to heaven and who's not, and when we're going to heaven and when we're not. And, but one thing is true. It is appointed unto man once to die, and then after that to judgment. We know that's true, because we don't know anybody in the past, as I, I would say within the last couple centuries, what, uh, 18th century? Do you know anybody who's still alive from the 18th century? A lot of them are passed from the 19th century and the 20th century, and right now we're in the 21st century, and we still see people departing up out of here. And the question that we want to ask you today is when you get to that point that you're going to breathe that last breath, are you confident that you will be in the first resurrection of the dead? Because there's going to be two resurrections the Bible talks about, right? That's right? Now, also, we hear people talking about, well, the church will not go through the tribulation period. And I, I'm still, I was talking about that Wednesday. When we looked at the, the great tribulation in Matthew, the 24th chapter, we found out that what Jesus was talking about was uh, the temple being destroyed, amen? And all the Jews being dispersed all over the world. And when, you, when we really got deep into it, we found out that that last week, because in the Bible, one day is like one year, we saw that in uh, Numbers, that's what God told Moses, that since you spied out the land for 40 days, <laughs> you didn't believe in me, each day will be a year that you're going to be in the wilderness. We, we see that, right? So, except the last week that people be talking about that um, when the tribulation starts, we found out that that's not true. According to the scripture, when you look back to the book of Daniel, you find out that Gabriel, the angel, explained it to um, Daniel what was going on. And that's that last week, the last seven years, that, that was when Jesus, from the time Jesus was born of a virgin birth all the way through the the ministry of John the Baptist all the way up until his crucifixion which took three and a half years and then after them three and a half years that's when the church the real church was dispersed now they had a church on earth and now they call it the Roman Catholic Church and we find out that Constantine, I guess, started that. When you study history, he made Christianity the state religion. But we find out as we read through history that a, a, a emperor called Titus actually destroyed the temple, right? 
and the Jews, that's when they were dispersed. And when you look at this, now we know that the Jews are God's chosen people, but he told them something in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. He told them, if you do what I'm telling you to do, you'll be blessed, right? That's right. That's okay. If you don't do what I'm telling you to do, you'll be cursed. So when you search out all this, you find out that a lot of things people are telling you that the church is going to be raptured, which I looked all in the Bible and I couldn't find it out. Now they could be talking about different passages in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, or 1 Thessalonians, the 4th chapter. But one thing that the scriptures have in common Jesus said, let's see what Jesus said here. He told us that all, everybody, let's see how he puts that. Um, I think it was in uh, the eighth chapter when they got into it. And Jesus told them that there's going to come a time, maybe it was in the fifth chapter, that all the dead, will hear his voice and rise, right? And it'd be some that will rise to the resurrection of life and some will rise to the resurrection of condemnation. And it tells you this all the way through the Bible. So the question was, what did we ask today? Where are you going when you breathe that last breath, right? Right. So when you look at Hebrews, the 11th chapter, we know by that first verse. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we haven't seen none of these things yet, right? That's right. Now, one thing that we do know that Jesus is a historical fact that Jesus did die on a cross in the Roman Empire. Right? Yes, it says. That is recorded. That's a record. And that he was buried, right, in a borrowed tomb. Amen? And that he rose the third day according to the scriptures. We know all this by the manuscripts that we have today. Amen? Amen. So, we also know that he told his disciples to wait for the promise before they go out there and start being a witness, right? That's right. And once they receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, they went out and start witnessing to everybody that you must be born again. That's the main thing because once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have eternal life. It tells you that in third chapter of John, right? Amen. Well, let's just remind them of it because a lot of people they may haven't heard this. In uh, John, the third chapter, the thirty-fourth verse, it says, "For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not." give the spirit by measure. So they're talking about Jesus here. That's who God sent. Amen. And then it says, For the Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hands. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. Amen. And he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abides on him. So that's scripture. That's what we do now. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is the heavenly hope. And what we want to do is go down to Hebrews the 13th. In Hebrews 11 chapter 13th verse. We want to, we want to really look at this. Because you have heard so many things, I know you have, because I, I could talk to people and they say, well, I, 
I'm not going through the tribulation. Let me tell you something. A lot of us have already been through a great tribulation. Jesus called what happened when it, uh, they destroyed the temple around 70 AD that those people were going through the great tribulation. He called it the great tribulation in Matthew 24th chapter. Amen? Amen. And from that time on, I don't know whether you've been hiding under a rock or something, but there's been a lot of oppression sure going on in this earth. And you can trace it all the way back to the time the Roman church came into power that they had these crusades going on. Mm -hmm. That anybody who didn't believe in what they were teaching, they would kill. Right. That's man, woman, woman child, child, whatever. They Your were killing up people. Yeah. And that's a part of history that people don't talk about. It. What the world. Roman Catholic did, they went all over the world Kill off the known world, I should say the European Empire, because that's where it started at. It started in the West. They went all over Europe killing people who didn't believe in what they were teaching. And that wasn't good enough that they brought that same doctrine over here. They call it the New World, which wasn't a new world. Because when they came across the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, to what we now call the United States of America, there were people already living here. Right. It was their country. They didn't discover nothing. No. And, and what they did, they brought that doctrine over here that they were going to come over here. This was the new Canaan to them. And they were... They based that on, you know, what they read in the scriptures and what they believe. But when you really search the scriptures, what Jesus taught was love one right. another. And, and seek the best for He didn't another. talk about killing people or oppressing people Take or doing right anything right. like that. Mm -hmm. And they, what the church did, this is the Presbyterian church, they brought that doctrine over here and they actually were killing engines taking their land and doing all that. And that wasn't enough around the 1600s, 1500s, they went to Africa and kidnapped black people and brought them over here to work in America for free. Slavery. For slaves. Now, if that's not a great tribulation, I don't know what is. Yeah, and even up until this day, they have that European mentality I'm going to talk about it. that they are the superior race. Mm -hmm. and, but when you trace it back, when you really look at Chris, uh, history and you look at what these archaeological people have dug up you know, all over the world, especially in the East, in Babylon, they find out that those were some highly intelligent people. And in Africa, they were highly intelligent people. But, well, why do you say that, Brother Carr? Because when you look at, uh, I'm just give you one example about Africa. When you look at uh, the pyramids, people right now with all the technology and stuff we know about science and all that stuff and physics, they still can't figure out how they built these structures, these large blocks, pyramids. and put them together, and they were so precisely put together that you can't even, don't do that, I'm talk, teaching. Um, what, what I'm doing is teaching here, but you know, you, what I'm learning, that I try not to let nothing distract me when I'm teaching. But a lot of times uh, we do have distractions. But as I was saying, if, if we were so smart, why come we can't figure out how they built on pyramids? And all these different things that we're discovering all over the world, uh, they call them the, the 10 wonders of the world, they can't figure out how they were built. But yet, 
We have a culture right now that say that they are more superior than any other culture that ever lived on this earth. Amen. So you, you need to start opening your eyes and see what's really going on. Especially uh, during this time period we're living in now because a, a lot is changing. And when you look at the book of Revelation and you look at what they call the Great Tribulation, some of them things are happening right now. Sure. And I haven't seen no rapture yet. It's been happening since our, our Amen. Period. And when you start look really looking at it, see what the devil does. The devil knows that people are gullible. Sure did. And he knows that if he tells a lie, they would rather believe the lie than the truth. Just like the devil will say, well, the only reason on pyramids and all that stuff is built because of ancient elements. Right. That's a lie. But, you know, but people they, believe that. Their minds have been programmed by the TV and what they look at in the news media and propaganda and everything. Anything but the truth. So what we want to do here on Saturday, what we want to do is start, if you say the just shall live by faith, and you have faith. Let's let's see what do you have faith in. That's right. what we're going to be talking right. about. What is it in? Do you have faith in God? Right. Or do you have faith in America? They messed up. Because yeah. right now a lot of people are fighting over America. Right. They're saying I'm an American. I, you know, we want America to be like it used to be. And no, I don't want it to be like it used, it, used to be, like it used to be. Because the way it used to be, they had everybody under oppression. Well, we were being hung on trees and everything. Doing everything that they were big enough to do. To have a because family. they picked up this mentality in the European and the West, mm -hmm. and they brought it over here to the East. They want to be and that wasn't enough. The Catholic Church actually went all the way down there in South America. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing, they were colonizing South America. That's what they did in Africa. They started colonizing well, they had those people. Indians, and they had them. all these different and, and people things. all over the world. And they still have people all over the world that is helping them do what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. And by the church being tax exempt, Nobody knows how many billions or trillions of dollars that the Catholic Church has. Mm -hmm. And they give it to them. But when you start looking at history, you're going to find this out. Now, don't believe me. Start, what I want you to do is start reading stuff for yourself what, yeah, before they books. start burning books and do all that. It's in the books. Because that's what Hitler did he, during his reign. He started burning books because he didn't want people to know the truth. And this is what's going on in America right now. They don't want certain books in school. Even when you Google and do different things, it'll put on there that you're not able to get this. It'll stop it. Um, a sign will come up and you can't. So you have to go to the books. Go to your library. They haven't tampered up those. But um, on the internet, they have now. There's certain things you can't uh, research. It'll stop you. That's true. And you, but you can still go in there, but you got to go in there a different way and put in a different definition that you can still get to it. If you want to know the truth, the best way to start is with the Word of God. That is the truth. Right, and the library is full of Bibles and stuff. Because since most people don't believe in God, right, that gives you a, a head start on finding out what the truth is. Yeah, well, because uh, like she said, a lot of times when you do a Google search, you're searching for something that they said, right. which is a lie. Which is a lie. So you're not gonna find it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's gonna, gonna come a time that everything will be revealed. Mm -hmm. What is hidden will be revealed. Amen. So let's look here in Rome, I mean Hebrews, the eleventh chapter. Let's, I'm just going to look at a few verses here. We're not going to take too much of your time. But Pastor, they got to do it while it's time because 
uh, the way the government is headed now, they would, if certain people get in office, it'll be martial law, so they may not even allow us to be in the libraries getting certain things or looking up certain things. Well, right now, if they, what they're doing, they're keeping a lot of history, uh, they're erasing they a lot of history. They don't even want it to be there. And since people have, are not going to church as much as they used to. Don't go to the library. And I can understand why people don't go to church as much as they used to, because on Sunday, where people usually go to church, it's the most divided day on earth. You got the white church over here, you got the black church over here, you got the Puerto Rican church over here, you got the Italian church over here. So it's all divided, and there's no unity in the church. So when people go to church, they find out that they, they're not getting the truth at church. Break the sky. So let's look at here at the 13th verse of this 11th chapter. Here's what it says in the scriptures. It says, these all died in faith, not having received a promise, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pillions on the earth. So what promise is they talking about here? The promise. Not having received a promise. What was the promise? The promise was the Messiah. All right. Then it says, And truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have an opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. When you really start looking at what God promised here, he promised a lot. Mm -hmm. He told Abraham, we have already been over that, that he'd be a father of many nations, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he said, right? Right. And I said we, we were uh, strangers and exiles. You know, we never what verse them. is that? Uh, 13. How does it read? It says, all these died in faith, guided and sustained by it, without receiving the tangible fulfillment of God's promises. Only having seen, anticipated them, having welcomed them from a distance, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on earth. Now, the best way to explain scripture mm -hmm. is which scripture? It Let scripture interpret scripture. Genesis because we have told you things that people say what the Bible means. Yeah. But when you ask them where is the scripture, they can't give it to you because it's not there. This is something they learned in school, theological school. Depending on which school they went to, each each school teaches prophecy a little different. Amen? But you have to know the truth for yourself. Go with me to 1 Peter. I always have a footnote in there to help me find that too. Well, that's the Bibles that we have today. Uh -huh. They have footnotes and all that stuff. But when you go over here to 1 Peter, the, temp, the first chapter, let's just see what, that, what, what Peter says over here. Because Peter walked with Jesus, right? Yeah, he did. He was a modern I mean, disciple. He was an eyewitness. When Jesus walked the earth. He was also a dying witness that he rose from the dead. Right. Amen. Right. And you know, see, the Bible interprets itself. In 1 Peter, the first chapter, it says here in the 10th verse, Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating 
when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that would follow. To them it was revealed, not to themselves, but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which the angels desire to look into. I was going to read out the Amplified verses 10 through 12. Regarding this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace of God that was intended for you Search carefully and inquire about this future way of salvation, mm -hmm. seeking to find out what person or what time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he foretold the sufferings of Christ and the glory, glories destined to follow. It was revealed to them that their services, their prophecies regarding grace, were not meant for themselves in their time, but for you in these things, the death, resurrection, and the glorification of Jesus Christ, which have now been told to you by those who preach the gospel to you by the power of the Holy Spirit, who was sent from heaven into these things, even the angels long to look. So that was the promise that Jesus was going to come. Right. He has come. He has come. And there was a and he has resurrection. Went back to heaven. And, a and when they talk about his second coming, when they talk about the second coming, mm -hmm. a lot is going to be going on. Right. Because we talked about that in Matthew 24 chapter. What's going to be happening on his second coming? Tell us what to do, you know, right there. Go with me to Romans, the fourth chapter. Let's see what the book of Romans says about this. Because we can't give you everything in one day. That's what I'm not, not going to try to give you everything in one day. Because we know a lot of saints are confused right now. They are. I mean, they're hearing so much stuff on the, um, what's confusing them the most is what they see, what they hear, hear mm -hmm. smell, mm -hmm. touch, and taste. Their yeah. five physical senses is what's really deceiving them. And God says it's a distraction. That's why, the truth. and see, the devil found this out a long That's time he ago. Uses. That he could use the the media, different media outlets, to tell a lie and keep telling that lie and tell that lie so many years that people start believing it. Now they're on Facebook, they're on TikTok, they're on everything. Right. So when you look at the fourth chapter of Romans, You're and that twenty first verse of that fourth chapter it says, and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to perform. So Abraham, God had promised Abraham a son mm -hmm. in his old age. And through that son, there that was the seed. Mm -hmm. And that seed was Christ. So Christ is the promise, right? Mm -hmm. Now when you look at this, uh, we want to look at this out of Amplified. Verses 16 do 25 out of the Amplified. You got your Amplified? Yeah. Read that. Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. That you is, had verse 16? Yes. Okay. Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. That is confident trust in the unseen God in order that it may be given as an act of grace, mm -hmm. his unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham. Okay, stop there. So that's, you see what we're talking about? This is what guaranteed. scripture says mm -hmm. about the promise. 
Now keep reading. It says not only for those Jewish believers who keep the law, but also for those Gentiles believers who share the faith. Can you stop Abraham. for a minute? Now, mm -hmm. I notice in my King James is reading a lot different than Amplified. So I'm going to ask you to please, when you go to the next verse, say verse 16, verse 17, verse 18, so that people listening can line this up with whatever version of the Bible they have. Because there's many translations out there. And what we're finding out with these so many translations out here, a lot of them are not what God is saying. It's what people think God is saying. It's like paraphrasing. Amen? Okay, I'm still in 16. That's all that's in verse 16. Yeah, I'm not finished. Okay. Just want to be better know. Not only for those Jewish believers who keep the law, but also for those Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, who is the spiritual father of us all. So all that was in verse 16, children. Right. 17 continues, uh, as it is written in the scripture, mm -hmm. I have made you a father of many nations in the sight of him in whom he believed, that is God, mm -hmm. who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. Verse 18. Okay, now, it's God mm -hmm. who gives life to the dead. That's right. You can't get life from any kind of voodoo or any kind of witchcraft or anything like that. You know, a lot of people are believing this now because they saw it on the social media. You know, they had this movie called Ghosts with Whoopi Goldberg and all them, right? That was just TV. And I'm just saying, a lot of people watch this kind of stuff and they believe. That's because they want that to stuff. It. And this is how the media is putting this stuff into people's head. That they're putting it in there so much that a lot of people are believing that they're hearing people who passed away, that they're hearing forces from them. Go ahead. Verse 18 reads, and hope against hope. Abraham believed that he would become a father of many nations as he had been promised by God. So numberless shall be your descendants be. And then verse 19 reads, without becoming weak in faith, he considered his own body. Now it now as good as dead for producing children. Mm -hmm. Since he was about a hundred years old, and he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb. Mm -hmm. Verse 20 reads, but he did not doubt or mm -hmm. waver in unbelief concerning mm -hmm. the promise of God, but he grew strong and empowered by faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21 reads, being fully convinced Mm -hmm. That God had the power to do what he had promised. The promise. And verse 22 reads, Therefore his faith was credited to him as righteousness, right standing with God. Mm -hmm. Verse 23 reads, now, now, not for his sake alone was it written, that is, <clears throat> was credited to him. Verse 24 says, but for our sake also to whom righteousness will be credited as those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Verse 25 reads, who was betrayed and crucified because of our sins and was raised from the dead because of our justification, our acquittal, absorbing our us of all our sins before God. So this heavenly hope we're talking about is a heavenly home in heaven. Right. Now, when you listen to different people that talk about the last, the end times, I'm going to put it like that, they say what's going on right now in Israel has been prophesied, amen, that they're going to come against Israel, right? And there's going to be a battle. And 
that's gonna be the time when the Lord's gonna stop step in, right? But they don't realize it's been change. a battle on and on and on. And well, on. when you really study the bad. Word of God, uh, it tells us in the Book of Revelation, the be. ones that say they are Jews are not. are not Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. Everything going on here to, up until the point that we live is. Um, Politics. And not only that, we don't know when that's going to occur. They asked Jesus day. When when is when is he coming back? Right. And he said only the Father knows. Only that, the Father right? knows that. He so know so you doing. can't build your doctrine on partial prophecy, mm -hmm. partial scripture. So but I, we do know one thing that if you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. That we do know that he went away to prepare a home for us. It right. tells us that in John the uh, 14th that's chapter. Right. He is doing it. <clears throat> Here's this, what this earth and uh, the heaven this, is going to pass, gonna away. pass away. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Right. That's now in John the 14th chapter, the first verse, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. That's right. You believe in God, believe also in me. That's right. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, you will be also. Now that's true. That's the truth. It didn't say nothing about it's going to be any rapture. It's see, see, nothing. when you start saying things what other people says that the church will not go through the, uh, the great tribulation and you start talking about the tribulation of seven years and then in the middle of seven years the devil's going to step into the temple at mm -hmm. Jerusalem, right. which it ain't no temple over there. Right. Mm -hmm. The last temple got destroyed. Right. And what you say, what they say, well, the Jews are going to rebuild the temple. You don't know that because God said that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. That's going to be the last temple, a new heavenly temple mm -hmm. that Jesus is going to set up here on earth. Right. He didn't say nothing about the Jews were going to do it. And probably not going to be built with hands. It's already built. That's what I'm saying. Let's look at something else. Go to 2 Corinthians here. Because, you know, a lot of people have, are confused. And what, what I'm learning, that when I listen to uh, the, the social media and different ministries and stuff that are seem to be the most popular out there on social media, that it's a lie. When you really research it, what they do, the most popular entertainers and different people that control the social media are saying the same thing, which is a lie. And if somebody else is saying something different, they will block them. Yes, they get their ratings up. Right, so they want you to believe a lie. Now, when you look at 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter... Whew. The 18th verse says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, this is what it says over here, right. but at the things which are not seen, That's right. for the things which are seen are temporary. Right, only temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. That's right. So everything you see here has an expiration date. Mm -hmm. This earth. Has an expiration date. We don't know when that's going to be, but we do know it has an expiration date. So you can't really put your faith in nothing here on earth. You have to put your faith in God. In God, they continue. Amen. Because we do know that. Well, let's just keep reading here. Go to the fifth chapter because what we have to go by what Scripture says, right? That's right. We do. When you look at, we want to look at this out of Amplified as we close. Mm -hmm. Because you have to know the truth for yourself. That's right. And once you know the truth for yourself, 
you'll realize that your time here on earth is like a flower. That's right. It, it blooms and blossoms and then it fades away. It says all in Peter and all in other times. And like God has, grass. once you know that there is a God, who created the heavens and the earth, you realize that the same God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Because you find out when you read through the scripture that he already destroyed the earth once by a flood, right? That's right. Because they were completely off the chain. And you can study that through Genesis, the first chapter, all the way, you know, through, the, through there about the flood and what happened. But this new earth that we have right now, the Bible says that it's going to perish with fire. That's right. And I'm going to believe God. So whether I'm alive or dead, I know I'm the Lord's. That's right. Because it does say in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, that the dead will rise first. That's right. And then we, if we're alive at that time when he comes back, we'll be called up into the air. We'll be That's if you called up. That's if Christ. we're alive. If you mean Christ. If you're in Christ. That's right. And it's going to happen so quick that 1 Corinthians 15 chapter says it's going to be like a twinkle of an eye. That's right. It's going to happen so quick. So if you're believing the movie Left Behind or Left Alone, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to happen so quick that nobody's going to know it. No, they're not going to know it. Because the, the devil's going to have them believing a lie. Right. Now, let's finish here in first, Second Corinthians the fifth chapter. Read verses out of Amplified, verse 1 through 8. It says, For we know that if the earthly tent, our physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Verse 2 says, For indeed, this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our immortal, eternal, celestial dwelling. Mm -hmm. And then verse 3 says, so that by putting it on, we will not be found naked. Mm -hmm. Four states, for while we are in this tent, mm -hmm. we groan, being burdened, often weighted down, oppressed. Mm -hmm. Not that we want to be unclothed, separated by death from the body, but to be clothed so that what is mortal, the body, will be swallowed up by life after the resurrection. Verse 5 reads, Now he who has made us and prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the Holy Spirit as a pledge, a guarantee, a down payment on the fulfillment of his promise. Six says, okay, so stop that, right there. Mm -hmm. So the promise about all of this, mm -hmm. your guarantee is not man, no. but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So if you are not in Christ, if Christ, if you don't believe that Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God, you don't have the Holy Spirit because it's Jesus who baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Amen. That's scripture. Amen. Okay, go ahead. Verse 6 says, So then, being always filled with good courage mm -hmm. and confident hope and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are asking from the Lord. 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight living our lives in a manner consist consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Eight says, we are, as I was saying, of good courage and confident hope and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. 
So that's the truth. That it is. reads a little different out of different translations you look at, but what it's talking about is the assurance of the resurrection. Amen. Everybody's going to be resurrection, going to have part in that resurrection. Whether it's the resurrection unto life or resurrection unto death. Amen. And that's what it tells you in the book of Revelation. Because it's, the whole Bible is about Jesus, the Christ. Amen. And what God said is going to happen and what God wants his people to do. Because it says here, you find this in uh, Revelation, the 20th chapter, the fourth verse, it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who were who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received a mark on their forehead or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. That's what the scripture says. It says, but the rest of the dead did not live again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Right. And it says the rest of the dead was the non believers It says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So that's what a lot of people are talking about. This is why the church won't go to this. the tribulation. They said when Christ is going to return in this seven-year period that they're talking about, that all this is supposed to break out, that the temple's going to be built and all of that, and then the devil's going to come up into the temple, the Antichrist, and going to do all this, that the church is going to be raptured. And they won't go through that last three and a half years of the, what they call the tribulation. Amen? But what they don't know that Christ has already came. Right, he already came. He already came during that seven year period that Daniel was talking about in the ninth chapter of Daniel and that he already has set up a new covenant. Right. And he come and he sent his angels and that to separate he's the wheat from the has dirt. already they have already killed him. Right. He's been resurrected. The Messiah and that he was buried and that he rose the third day and has already ascended back to heaven and that he is coming back right. for a church. Right. Right? Yeah, not in the church. He didn't the say one. for a certain no, group of people. people. He didn't say a no. people who say they are Jews no. or a people who say that they can trace their genealogy no, back believers. to the Jewish yeah. heritage or their DNA and all of that mm -hmm. or or what part of the country that they are living in. He's, he ain't looking at that. You know we all scattered. He knows that the true Jews are still scattered all over the earth. And when you, when you read the book of Revelation, it says that he's going to go to the four parts of earth and gather all these people back to all himself. His sheep and lambs. Just believe and his angels are going to do that. Yeah. yeah. See, a lot of people think that we're supposed to be separating good from evil, but it's God tells us in this holy book that that's the angel's job. Right. We just supposed to the angels are going to separate. The truth. One scripture says to tear from the wheat. That's right. Another scripture says to go from the lamb. That's right. The evil the angels good. are going to do this. And evil here evil we're talking about what we're going to do. I'm going to stop right there because. The evil from the good. I want you to, you to digest what we've talked about here today about this heavenly hope. Amen. And we're going to. 
proceed on through the book of Hebrews next week. That's right. Have a good day. And when you put it all the way down, the evil from the good. Because those who are evil are...